In this video, I'll be showing the easiest way to run large language models locally on your GPU with Llama CPP Vulkan. Now the reason why this is the easiest method is because it doesn't rely on the CUDA toolkit for NVIDIA or ROCKM for AMD. Instead, this uses Vulkan shaders to do the processing, which is the same API that Linux games use. So in other words, as long as you can play games on your system, then that's the only requirement. Nothing else is needed. And performance is also extremely good. In fact, it's so good that if you're using an AMD GPU, there's really no point of using ROCKM for LLMs. But if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, then there are other methods that will be faster. For example, Llama CPP and other programs can be compiled to use CUDA instead of Vulkan, which gives better performance, but the difference isn't much. I benchmarked an RTX 3060 and found that CUDA gave about a 7% boost in performance over Vulkan. However, unless you plan to use CUDA for other applications, you might be better off just sticking to Vulkan, because having CUDA installed on your system takes up a lot of storage and can lead to longer system updates. Now, I'll be doing this guide on a fresh installation of Cache OS, but these same steps will work on any other distro. The reason why I'm using Cache is because it's currently the most popular distro and I've noticed from comments on my previous videos that a lot of new users who just switched to Linux are using Cache. So I figured it would be the best distro to use for these sort of demos. Also, I'll be running the models on an RX 9060 XT 16GB. But again, this guide will also work for Nvidia and it should work for Intel Arc GPUs as well. Alright, so to get started, let's first go to the GitHub page for Llama CPP, and then click on Releases. Scroll down and you'll find a list of different versions to download for various operating systems and architectures, including some for Windows and Mac. The process on those operating systems is similar, but of course not exactly the same. But most of the tips I'll be giving today are still relevant for those systems as well. So since I'm running Linux, I'll go ahead and download the Ubuntu Vulkan version. Even though it says Ubuntu, it should still work for any other distro. Next, go to the Downloads folder and extract the downloaded zip file. You should now see a folder called Build. Click into the folder and then go into the Bin folder. Then right-click an empty area in the folder and open a terminal here. Now before running a model, obviously we'll need to pick one. The best place to find these is at huggingface.com. But picking a model from the enormous sea of different models available here can be daunting. So here's a super condensed explanation of how to pick one. First is the name of the model which will depend on what you're trying to do. For example, if you need help with coding, then Quen models are a good choice. Or if you want a more general purpose LLM, then Gemma is a better option. Of course, there are tons of other models, including Llama, DeepSeek, Claude, and much more. But for the sake of time, let's just stick with Gemma for today. Now let's talk about VRAM capacity, which is the biggest limiting factor when it comes to choosing a model. This is because the number of parameters a model is trained with directly determines how good it'll be. But more parameters also means more memory. Now when it comes to Gemma 3 models on consumer GPUs, I recommend either 27 billion parameters if you have at least 16 gigs of VRAM, or 12 billion parameters if you have less than 16 gigs. You'll also want to make sure you include GGUF in the search box, since these provide quantized models. As you can see, there are a few different authors who have created more or less the same model, but have applied slightly different customizations. Any of these models should work very similar, but I decided to go with Unsloth's model. Now like I said, GGUFs provide quantized models which we can see here on this side. The lower the quantization, the lower the memory requirements, but the quality of the model also suffers. In general, Q3 is considered the lowest you'll want to go, and the sweet spot is right around Q4 or Q5. So if you have enough VRAM, I'd definitely go with Q4 or Q5. You can also click on hardware compatibility and enter your GPU model which will give you nice color coded visuals to help you determine the biggest model your card can handle. To be clear, you can run larger models but this will use your system's RAM which will lead to much slower performance. So in general, I'd stick with just the VRAM. Now since my GPU has 16GB, I'll go with the Q3KS model. 
I want to make sure I leave some extra memory available for the desktop environment and the browser. Once you've determined which model you want, click on it, then in the top right click on use this model. Then click on llama.cpp. If you don't see it on the list then click on the settings box for local apps and make sure to check llama.cpp. Now when you click on it you'll be given this screen. All you need to do is copy and paste this command into the terminal. But make sure to add a period forward slash in front like you see here. And also add two more options. I've included this command in the video description to make it easy for you to copy and paste. The dash fa on command turns on flash attention, which can improve GPU performance in some cases. This command isn't necessary, but it usually never hurts to turn it on. Now the next command is dash ngl100, and this is required if you want GPU acceleration. If you don't include this then it'll only run on the CPU. This parameter sets the number of layers that will run on the GPU. I believe the maximum number here is 120 but it really depends on the particular LLM. Leaving this at 100 should max out most models so I recommend just leaving it at that. Now there are a number of additional parameters that can be set here which might be important depending on what you're trying to do. For example, if you want to set up an LLM for vibe coding, then you'll need to specify additional parameters here. But for just basic usage like we're doing today, this is all we need. So now I'll hit enter which will automatically start downloading the model. And then once it's finished, the model will start running. You'll know the model is running when you see this message indicating that the server is listening at this address. You can either enter this address in your browser or simply right click it and select open link. Also keep in mind that you can access this from any other device running on your local network. If the devices have a firewall then you'll need to open up port 8080. And you'll also need to replace the IP address with that machine's particular IP address on your local network. Also another reason why I chose this model is because it supports vision, which you can see here in the supported modalities. So I'll start by typing what I want it to do, which is to examine an image. It says we can either directly upload the image through here or provide online links of photos. Also notice how quickly it's spitting out the tokens. This will depend on how powerful the GPU is. As you can see the 90XT is performing really well here and is completely adequate for these LLMs. But anyway, I've already transferred some images onto this PC to test with, so I'll go ahead and click here to upload an image. The photo is of a Ryzen 3900X CPU, so let's see what it says about it. Sometimes it takes a minute to begin, so let's skip forward. So far so good, looks like it's being very detailed like I asked it to. Let's let it finish and then I'll go through what it said. So it says the photo shows a close up top down view of an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X processor. It's well lit and the focus is sharp, allowing for a clear view of the chip's details. Then it goes on to describe the shape and size, color scheme, marking, and text. It looks like it's actually able to read all the words in the picture which is pretty nice. But now it's starting to talk about the pins and contacts. And here we see an infamous hallucination that LLMs are known to do. It says the gold pins look intact and undamaged. However, the picture doesn't actually show any of the pins. So obviously it can't know that but still said it anyway. If you're running a better model with more parameters or a higher quantization, then these sort of issues should be less frequent. But again, hallucinations are unfortunately just an inherent quality of LLMs. But anyway, now it continues to describe the photo's background and lighting, which is pretty nice. Not only does it describe the object in the photo, but also describes details about the photo itself and potential use cases. It even mentioned how the photo might be used for sale purposes, which is actually correct. I took this picture for an eBay listing. Overall it seems to work pretty good for simple tasks like this. So now let's take a quick look at the settings in the top right corner. There are various tabs here if you want to check them out, but the only options I want to point out are the temperature and max tokens, since these are probably the most useful. Increasing the temperature increases the randomness of the responses, while the max tokens limits the maximum length of each response. 
Tweaking these values can provide better responses if you're not happy with how it's performing. Now when you're done chatting and want to unload the model, simply go back to the terminal and press Ctrl C. Now let's quickly go through a few more helpful tips. The first is deleting models you no longer want. Well to do that, all you need to know is where the models are located. So here is where they're stored by default in Linux. The next tip is installing an application to monitor VRAM usage and other statistics. This can be done a few different ways. The first is by installing LACT, which is a GPU overclocking utility that also provides statistics. And in fact, I've already made a video about it, so be sure to check that out. Another option is NVTOP for NVIDIA and AMD GPU TOP for AMD, which are strictly for statistics monitoring, not overclocking. These provide terminal-based monitoring, and as you can see, AMD GPU TOP provides pretty much everything you'd ever want to know about the GPU and how it's performing, so I suggest checking this one out. Now the last tip I have is for users who are running an Arch-based distro. Instead of downloading the zip file like I did earlier, I recommend installing the system package instead. Since I'm currently running Cache OS, this can be done using Paru like you see here. This is the preferable method because it'll keep itself updated and will automatically check every time you update your system. The only difference is when entering the command to run a model. Instead of adding a period forward slash to the beginning of llama server like we did before, now you can simply enter llama server without the period forward slash. And you don't need to be in any specific folder to run it. So if you previously downloaded and extracted the zip file, then you can go ahead and delete that. Alright, so that's everything you need to know to get up and running. If you enjoyed this short guide, then be sure to give the video a thumbs up and feel free to ask any questions down in the comments. Also, let me know which models you've been running recently and which ones are your favorite. I am planning to do more videos on this including customized projects that utilize LLMs and other types of models as well. For example, I previously created a free and open source smart security camera app that utilizes YOLO object detection. So check out the playlist for that project if it sounds interesting. Even though I'm not one of those people who bought into all the hype, I do think AI can be useful for certain applications, so it'll be interesting to see what else I can do with it. So if you're interested in seeing that, then be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.